very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, um, for, uh, for calling me to speak in this debate. Um, I would uh, pay tribute to my honourable friend for securing it, but uh, time is short. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think this uh, debate is of supreme importance at the moment, and I'll come on to why I think that is. I'm going to use Plymouth, I'm afraid, as an example for the wider Southwest, because we will talk, talk about investment in the Southwest, but I want to put a bit of meat on the bones and a little bit of uh, data and statistics, which I know is frightening for some, but I think it's very important in this. Because I think, much like the rest of the Southwest, we haven't talked enough, uh, enough about Plymouth in this place, and the effects of that are very clear to see. Plymouth was once an industrial powerhouse, centred, of course, on the dockyard, where tens of thousands of workers, welders, fabricators, shipbuilders and union shop stewards, contributed more to this nation's security and heritage than Plymouth is ever credited with. The military commitment, although diminished in numbers, as my right honourable friend just indicated, continues to this day. As it is today, though, Plymouth was also much more than a military city. The harbour was used by merchant sailors to trade routes to London and all over the world, and transatlantic liners used to depart regularly from Mill Bay. But there is a feeling in the streets and communities of Plymouth today, uh, Sir Roger, that should be represented in this place, that once the nature of a modern economy changes and the nation rightly or wrongly declines its focus on defence, that Plymouth has been forgotten, discarded after use, if you like. And that's why I really welcome the South West Growth Charter today, today which lights a path to a vision of better things again. We will all speak on different parts of it, but in my short time, I want to speak on infrastructure and government spend in the South West and highlight those two points. Infrastructure is the catalyst for growth. There can be no doubt about it, and regions in transition need a fair deal from government across all sectors. Now, every city's representatives, as I said, can come here and have a moment at the government, but I want to put on a record, a, a bit of evidence in this. So transport spend, if you look at it, and I know London is different, but £219 per head uh, it, it is in Plymouth compared to £1,869 in London. Public health, £47 a head uh, against a national average of £63 per head. Despite being the most deprived area in the South West, Plymouth is also the most underfunded. Why are Plymouthians worth so much spending so much less on? I, I'm, I'm afraid it's just not acceptable. Now, I'm going to be slightly controversial. I have my own views on why this has happened. I do believe that one of our main jobs in this place, and I know that everybody agrees with me, all of my colleagues, is to make government work for our constituents at the personal and local level. And I have my own views on how well this has been done in the past. Locally, I never cease to be surprised by the elected officials in Plymouth and the manner in which they carry on contrasts sharply with the professionalism of the council staff who work so hard for Plymouth. As elected officials, elections are our appraisals, if you like, from our bosses, the people. At every election for many years now, local or national, the largest party has not been Labour or the Conservatives or even the Lib Dems. It has always been the don't cares, those who do not vote. And I'm afraid the time, time for blaming these people on not voting has passed. It's time we turn this on its head and recognise that we have to give people something to vote for, not chastise them for their lack of interest in us. Plymouth is an ambitious city with gifted and genius people who can adapt like any other city to change. But government of all colours has simply not delivered to, for too many in our city. And that is evidence in our elections. That has to change. So what do we do? We have a unique opportunity in this parliament. Almost the entire region is represented by the party in government. The biggest, most determining factor in economic growth for a region far from economic engines like London is transport <coughs> links. Big companies getting in and out of our region, providing the skilled jobs, professional development for our ambitious uh, and talented people that they deserve. We cannot, as a cohort, continue to unequivocally support the government without genuine spade-in-the-ground investment in our transport infrastructure. It is unacceptable for a region so large, so diverse and so productive as ours to be expected to survive on the rail link we currently have, irrespective of the government's plans elsewhere. So I strongly congratulate the Peninsula Rail Task Force on their report into rectifying this. And I urge the Prime Minister and her team to read it very carefully indeed before committing to further investment elsewhere in the country. As we all know, politics is a team game and it works both ways, both from us to the government, but also from the government to us. I support this Prime Minister in everything she does, as do my colleagues, but our commitment to make government work for people in the South West must trump everything else. I firmly believe that a Conservative government has done more of late for our region than ever has done before, but we must let it be known that if that line is crossed, we must hold firm and hold together as a cohort to put our region first, else we continue this degradation of politics that we're all so keen to avoid. 
It is not all bad by any stretch. That jobs lag from a dockyard that employed 35,000 workers in its heyday to 3,500 workers today has been filled by enterprising, determined Plymouthians who have created a buzzing local economy. It just needs a bit more help from central government. Similarly, when it comes to central government, there could be no doubt the single biggest factor in improving the life chances of our constituents is having a job, and unemployment in this, in, under this government has halved since 2010. But we must not take our foot off the gas. This southwest growth agenda is key to this prosperity.